Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We're pleased to see all of you here because we're always pleased to see all of you here. But uh, this is fairly exciting. This is the first time in, in several years that the speaker has been here. Uh, delighted to welcome him. Um, let me remind you that um, Speaker Bosma has served in the legislature since 1986, so he's a fairly old hand. Of course, he's a young man, but he's an old hand at this. And um, he's here to talk about his, um, his priorities for this legislative session. Of course, it's going to be a tough one as we continuously read in the paper. Uh, our legislators are kind of singing the mantra, there's no money, so uh, they're, we're, they're trying to get us off their backs, but it doesn't quite work. <laughs> uh, uh, but I, I know that he's gonna talk about the budget, about telecommunications, about uh, fraud and corruption, about rooting out fraud and corruption, <laughs> uh, and improving educational opportunities. So uh, without further introduction, let me introduce Speaker Boss. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chancellor. And it's, uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, it's part of my commitment to, as a Speaker of the House, to travel the state and uh, bring the Speaker of the House to your house. Uh, this uh, invitation from uh, the Chancellor and IPFW uh, to be here today and participate in a, an open dialogue throughout the day today is uh, exciting for me and uh, much appreciated. Uh, it is a pleasure for me to be on campus. It's been just a little while since I've been here, having both uh, Purdue and IU degrees. I love to see our uh, regional campuses and the great uh, service that they're providing to our, for our state's future. And as I walked in with uh, the uh, my security guard who got me <laughs> through all the construction and Glenn was sharing with me his own education experiences here, uh, it just really struck home for me that the regional campuses provide uh, a key economic driver for the future of our state as individuals who both are just budding students and this is the right campus for them or uh, local folks who are raising a family and pursuing a career to better themselves. Uh, it's key that the regional campuses and our great state institutions are one dramatic key to that. Uh, the Indiana General Assembly is off to uh, a quick start and with uh, very, uh, very uh, high profile concerns and challenges that face us. Uh, I'm a firm believer that out of great challenge comes great opportunity, and, uh, and if you measure that correctly, that means there's a lot of opportunity in this coming <laughs> session. Uh, we have a uh, budget, a difficult uh, task with the 2011 budget that is going to be balanced with 2005 revenues. At no time in our state's history, any time in our state's history, even during the Depression, have we gone backwards in revenues six years. And uh, we have pledged to uh, do what responsible businesses and families have done all over our state, and that is live within our state's means. In fact, if you happen to pick up the New York Times over the weekend, which, which I do, I like to see, I read the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal so I can get both, both sides, plus all of our local publications and statewide publications. Uh, but the New York Times had a list of those states with the most challenging uh, deficit and budget difficulties this year. And if, if you notice, Indiana was the smallest budget deficit of all 50 states, and that's because of the responsible actions taken by the General Assembly and Governor Mitch Daniels' uh, dramatic uh, and difficult decision to even cut the budget further and live within our state's means. We will accomplish that result uh, this year. I can tell you, since we're on campus and talking about education funding, no doubt throughout the day, it's my hope that uh, the House Republican budget will restore the 3% uh, cut that was in the governor's original proposal. Uh, we're working on that right now to be sure that we can uh, make that accommodation here uh, for higher education because of the critical importance higher ed holds in our state's future. Uh, the second uh, element, I think, of a, of a successful General Assembly will be uh, dramatic education, public education uh, reform this year. And uh, I just got off the phone moment late because I was talking to a national reporter with an education publication asking why I was personally uh, handling or personally authoring the uh, charter expansion bill and I went back 25 years uh, when I really was a young man, Chancellor, Paul Hedegaard, Bill Fenner, 
and was hired by the last reform-minded superintendent of public instruction, H. Dean Evans, as a staffer to, to begin the process of moving Indiana's public education forward. I introduced the first charter school bill in 1994 in our state, and along with Teresa Lovers and Bob Baining and many other champions, uh, have determined that uh, the last 10 years of limping along with our current charter school situation does not give Hoosier families all the options that they need. So we are having a dramatic charter school expansion bill that is now passed out of the Education Committee. We'll be moving to the uh, floor of the House. Uh, I'm personally meeting with school superintendents, uh, principals, teachers, parents, and yes, even the State Teachers Association to see if we can come to some uh, common ground that refocuses the discussion not on the system, not on the adult participants, but on the education of the child. We'll be undertaking those same discussions as we, uh, as we talk about scholarships for those who cannot afford school choice themselves as we talk about more accountability for public schools and public school teachers, and more opportunities for local decision makers to treat teachers as professionals, uh, rewarding those who do an excellent job in dealing with those that aren't able to do uh, the job at all. So these are heavy duty issues, but we're not done. Wait, to, as you see on late night TV, wait, there's more. Um, we will be also dealing with some of our critical economic development issues that our state faces right now, the most dramatic of which is a uh, uh, unemployment insurance compensation fund that is bankrupt. We borrowed two billion dollars from the federal government, and um, House Republicans have, along with our Senate colleagues and uh, the governor, pledged to make a big difference in this. To implement a program that is balanced, that uh, treats those that are unemployed with compassion, yet lives within our means, and also does not extraordinarily increase the cost to employers at this difficult time. A bill did pass out of the House Labor Committee yesterday. We'll be hitting the floor next week, and uh, that discussion will begin in earnest. Um, as if that wasn't enough to deal with and the many other issues before the General Assembly. We also have the once a decade uh, task of <laughs> creating new uh, House, Senate, and Congressional districts that will govern our state. We're really predetermined who our uh, elected officials are for the next decade, not the person, but in general the party. And that process has not been a pretty one over the last several decades. In fact, the, the maps drawn in the House uh, in 2001 resulted in the anomaly of one party uh, having almost 60% of the vote, the popular vote for state representative, and still serving in the minority. We've pledged to draw fair districts that uh, abide by all constitutional and statutory requirements, comply with the Voting Rights Act, and, and also allow those who win the election to actually govern. Uh, that's a, a tight agenda, it's a tough agenda, it's a big agenda, but it's one that we've pledged uh, to address in, uh, in a new fashion. Uh, with 24 years now in the General Assembly, I hesitate to say that, uh, but uh, the General Assembly is not the professional, civil place of discussion that our forefathers uh, anticipated when our democratic experiment moved forward. So I've taken the dramatic step of announcing a couple of things this year. First, uh, the reinstitution of civility in our chamber and uh, open discussion, debate on issues that are emotional and people maybe don't want to talk about, but it's okay. It's, it's the uh, crucible of democracy. And then I reached across the aisle on Organization Day and announced uh, for the first time in our state's history that two individuals from the minority party would be selected as committee chairmen. Two Democrats, one uh, Steve Stemler from Jeffersonville, Indiana, chairing our Commerce and Economic Development Committee, a key committee in the House. And then in Northwest Indiana, Democrat Chet Dovis, uh, chairing a Government Reduction uh, Committee, which is already holding hearings as to how to make Hoosier employers, cities, towns, schools, and families uh, less burdened by overregulation that, that seems to have uh, encompassed every sector of our lives today. So uh, it's my hope that uh, while the, the Chancellor said I was young, don't feel that young Chancellor, I guess maybe I feel a little weight on my back right now, but it's my hope that uh, the experience that myself and our team has developed over the last couple of decades will allow us not only to accomplish these key issues, but also to uh, cause our institution to turn the corner and uh, reinstitute a civil debate on these issues that all Hoosiers have the opportunity to participate in as well.